Paul and the Fine Arts Department, we all say thank you for supporting us. And we're looking forward to doing this next year. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to remind you that we will be starting our program very shortly. We'd ask that you please use this time to use the restroom or perhaps grab yourself another drink before our program begins in just a few minutes. But before we get to our program, ladies and gentlemen, how about we give a round of applause for Mrs. Julianne Evelsizer and our Bishop Ward performers this evening. Marvelous job by all. We'll begin our program in just a few minutes. Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, we'd like to begin our program. We'd like to get to the business of recognizing some very important people at Bishop Ward and then also to renewing our commitment to the students of Bishop Ward. First of all, my name is Brian McKiernan. I am a proud graduate of the Bishop Ward class of 1974, and it is my privilege to be your Master of Ceremonies this evening. As we get started tonight, we have just a few acknowledgments we'd like to make right off the bat. First, we'd like to thank all of the sponsors that helped to make this event possible. Without their generosity and without their support, we would not be able to make this event so special. A full list of our wonderful sponsors can be found in your program, but let's all give them a big round of applause. We'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge our past Hall of Fame members, many of whom are here with us today. The full list of Hall of Fame members can be found in your program, but if you are here and you are a past Hall of Fame inductee, would you please stand at this time so that we can recognize you? So any members of the Hall of Fame. It is phenomenal to see our Hall of Fame members continuing to come to Bishop Ward events, continuing their support of Bishop Ward. We'd also like to acknowledge the clergy and religious who have joined us this evening. If you wouldn't mind when I call your name, if you'd all stand, and we'd love to give you all a round of applause. We have Father Joel Haug, who gave our opening prayer. (laughs) 
sister Rosie Kolich is with us from class of 76. I believe I saw her back here. And I believe Monsignor Stuart Swetland is with us this evening, the president of Donnelly College. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's induct this year's Hall of Fame members. We're excited to induct this year's Hall of Fame recipients into the Bishop Ward Hall of Fame. And to introduce the induction, we have a short video. We had a couple of half times where Coach got a little excited and would smash the, the blackboard and get everybody's attention. I mean, he. He was serious. I mean, it was serious business. And it was funny when it was the other guy getting in trouble. We'd be laughing our heads off, saying, ha, ha, ha. But, it, but if it was you. <laughs> yeah, no, it, we just made sure it wasn't us. <laughs> yeah. He was the force behind it all. And everybody knew by then what he wanted and what he expected. <laughs> what that translated into was some pretty serious and uh, intense practices. Practices were always hard. Coach gave us a little uh, drink of water one time <laughs> during uh, three days. We practiced three times a day when the Kansas City Chiefs called off practice because of the heat and humidity. And they didn't believe in in giving any water or popsicles or <laughs> watermelon. Anything. Nobody got watermelon. So we'd like run back into this locker room. They didn't have hot water. And we'd jump in the shower and just sit there and shiver. It was lucky, really, that nobody died of a heat stroke, really. Our junior year uh, was one of Coach Warner's uh, worst seasons, I think, record-wise. And uh, we were able to rebound from that. We would never go on the field without believing we were the most prepared team, at least physically. We didn't have any superstars. You know, we had good, solid football players who were smart. Ward was always ranked in the top 10, so we had a tradition to live up to. So we were a little discouraged because our, when we were juniors, our, our team wasn't any good, and uh, we had a bad season. Ward had had some great football teams and some great athletes, but they didn't have the state playoff system, so they didn't go on to the state playoffs like we had the opportunity to do. We believed in each other. We invested ourselves to be a winner. We weren't expected to go too far in the playoffs. So after with the first two wins, everybody was, was amped up. Fans, players, coaches. I mean, Warner wouldn't let you see that, but you know, that's just another game. You know, that's the way he was. I've known Dick Panther since we attended the eighth grade together at Blessed Sacrament in Kansas City, Kansas. Then we both went to Bishop Ward High School. He played football, basketball, and baseball. He went on to Notre Dame University. He played baseball. I always stress that he's always been Catholic and very competitive, but the most outstanding thing that I really found out about him was that he was also very caring. I don't only mean for his family but also kids that didn't have an advantage and that sometimes had physical disabilities. Nobody chose them to be part of a team or nobody chose to be their partner in something. And uh, Dick always did. I've always been for the underdog. And that started up in Iowa when I was in about the fifth grade. We had a girl in the class and her life expectancy was very limited and I used to walk her home with the books and bringing that sensitivity to Ward was important because there's a lot of people when we had 800 students that weren't getting a fair share, you know, nobody was talking to them. Those were some of the best years I ever had because first of all, it humbled me. Later on, I learned more self-confidence primarily by way of sports, but also because of the teachers and the coaches and the nuns. We had a 50-year reunion for the 1959 team that was undefeated 
for football. And uh, Don Stump, of course, is the coach. And afterwards, I asked him, what would you think if I tried to form a scholarship fund in the name of Don Stump? Would that bother you at all? He said, oh, are you kidding? That'd be great. When we started this scholarship in 2008, Coach Stump would meet me at Ward and the administration would allow the kids on the Stump Scholarship to meet me in a room. And we'd talk to them about how they're doing and how they're feeling. They've got so much ahead of them, they don't know what it is yet. They'll find out Catholicism in the middle of Wyandotte County is, 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 is super. First of all, I gotta be grateful I've been living with someone for 57 years that cares about me. I'm grateful to have two beautiful daughters. So I'm grateful because I have the capacity to help people when they need help. And uh, I'm grateful for Ward High School. I don't want to see this school ever go down. I wasn't the greatest student, but Ward was good to me, the whole package. I look at uh, Coach Warner and my time with this team, uh, it changed me. He was leading young men, a uh, God-fearing family man himself, and uh, taught us the game of life. I uh, got to stop in and see Coach Warner at his home about a month before he passed away. And uh, I was able to thank him for what he'd done for me. and. I was so glad to have had that opportunity. We were a totally different team in the playoffs. Coach Warner changed the offense. I give him total credit because he normally was very structured, but he let Mark Kepler use his skills, great option quarterback with a great arm, and really opened it up. We had Garden City, our last game. This was a state championship. The stands were full. Baseball field was full, the fence going up 14th Street, packed. I mean, we knew coming off last year, going through a 6-3 season, hey, we made it this far. We didn't care who we played. We never backed down from anybody. There was the Buffalo in the end zone. They brought it all. They had a very good team, but not that day. We did it with fundamentals and the drive to win instead of superstar, superstar. And we didn't need the Buffalo in the end zone to get it done. Because of our endurance in the fourth quarter, our discipline and training with Coach Warner, nobody could keep up with us, most of the teams. We were like a band of brothers. One thing that I'd never appreciated until I was done playing football was the pep squad, the cheerleaders, and it was a community event. It wasn't just the football team, but the first people in line that supported all of us individually was our own family. You know, what mom and dad did and gave up, not only to have us in Bishop Ward, but to support us in our athletic endeavors and what all these other people were contributing. It was definitely a win for the entire community. They all participated. In eighth grade, we could hear the football games on Friday night with those big long horns back then. We never dreamed that we would be part of this wonderful football dynasty. Coach Duggan's done a great job rebuilding this program, and he's put a lot of effort into it. He's a great leader, and we were lucky that we had that great leadership. Coach was big on our Catholic religion. He wanted us to be tested and grow, and then we get the state championship. We feel very fortunate that we were part of something this special.
marvelous video. At this time, I'd like to ask Bishop Board President Jay Dunlap to join me on stage as we personally introduce this year's inductees. And as he's making it up onto the stage, there is one more special introduction that I failed to make a little bit earlier. I understand that Father Mark Murtis did come in in stealth mode somewhere here. And so, Father Mark, if you are here, if you would please stand and let us know that you are here. Aha, uh -huh, he doesn't want to admit it. I see how this goes. Well, Father Mark is here, and we are so blessed to have him join us tonight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's personally meet our 2022 Hall of Fame inductees. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Dick Panther. Dick was at the baseball field this morning and threw out the first pitch for today's game against St. Pius X. That's right. And <laughs> oh, the distance doesn't matter. It was a strike. And he opened a Cyclone victory as the Cyclones won three to one. Now please welcome to the stage co-captains Mark Kepler and Chris Manning accepting the award for the 1971 state championship football team. I can still remember that buffalo. So at this time, would any other members of that state champion football team from 1971 please stand so that we can see and honor you as well. It was a phenomenal game, and all of these gentlemen did a tremendous job, not only on that day, but every other day of that whole season. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are privileged this evening to be honoring a very remarkable man who is not only a proud alum of Bishop Ward, but also a great leader and a great mentor to all of those he comes in contact with, and that's Monsignor Michael Mullen. Monsignor will be celebrating 60 years in the priesthood this May. Unfortunately, Monsignor Mullen is unable to join us in person as he's recovering from an illness. However, he did send a video message to share with all of you. Well, thank you for your op the opportunity to be with you this evening. I'm very grateful to Father Joel Haug, 
chaplain at Bishop Ward High School for all that he has done for our alma mater. I want to congratulate the Bishop Ward football team of 1971 for the contribution that you have made to Bishop Ward. Your spirit and enthusiasm for all of our alma mater is a symbol of the generous contribution which so many groups of alumni have made to Bishop Ward in the 114 years of providing Catholic education to the youth in Kansas City, Kansas. Thank you to each of you individually and as a team. And I offer my special congratulations to Dick Panther, class of 1960, and alumnus of extraordinary service. Dick, he'll be there. How proud our mutual friend, Father Ron Cornish, would be of you today, this evening. He used to say on the football field, as the quarterback, I handed the ball off to Dick, and we marched down, down the field. It's true. So thank you so much for what you've done. And my friends, thank you, Dick, because you have carried on raising very important uh, endowment funds to support Bishop Ward uh, over the years. Uh, that provides Catholic education for the youth of our city. I pray that Bishop Ward can continue to uh, in this mission of Catholic education. It's a precious gift. The value of Catholic education and formation leads me to express my deepest gratitude for the 60 years of priesthood that I am privileged to celebrate this year. I was ordained on May 26th of 1962 in the Cathedral of St. Peter. My priesthood has been one of great joy and fulfillment. When I entered the seminary, my parents and everyone encouraged me as they did all priest brothers and sisters. I have served as priest under four archbishops. That would be Archbishop Edward Hunkler, Ignatius Strecker, Archbishop James Kelleher, and Archbishop Joseph Nauman. I began service at Bishop Ward in a particular way in 1996 as a member of the Board of Trustees. President and there I served with President Jay Dunlap and Principal, or rather Chaplain Joel Howard and Principal uh, Michelle Olson. They give great vitality and guidance to our school. My heart is filled with joy. I've always credited Bishop Ward with the preparation that I needed in priestly service. Thank you, my dear friends. But let us continue today to encourage our Bishop Ward students to discern the vocation God plans for them and to embrace that vocation with love. God bless each of you. Go Cyclones! Ladies and gentlemen, we congratulate Monsignor for all of his years of selfless service, not only to the Bishop Ward community, but to the greater community. He is indeed a great leader. Let's give him one more round of applause and send positive energy his way.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, we all know that Bishop Ward is all about the students, both past, present, and future. We know that your support, your generosity, your dedication to those students truly makes a difference. You are changing the lives of Bishop Ward students. Let's meet a few of those students on video at this time. I was raised by a single mom. The Catholic education was available to me through donations. One of the biggest questions I had was, what was I made for and what's my purpose in life? There's something that drives me that makes me want to be a better person. I'm really into sports, mostly softball, and I'm also the president for the class of juniors. I was never a part of that before, but Ms. Gregory told me that I should do it because I am like a leader. It's important for us to have the guidance now that we are young and maturing and growing. I'm a fifth generation cyclone, and if you know someone is going through something, here at Ward, people will make sure that you're okay. I was moved up as a freshman to Varda City. I think I was definitely nervous. There was this girl, and she really had an impact on me. This year, we had a new girl come on, freshman. She's never played volleyball in her life. And she was very athletic. As the season went on, I mentored her, and I realized that I see a lot of her in me when I was a freshman. And this is like an example of like how Bishop Ward is a family. She's a freshman, I'm a senior, but that doesn't matter. Like we're still close friends, and we'll always have that relationship. When I first got here, I was a troublemaker. I was just like, hey, man, I'm about to come here and do what I want to do. And I got a quick reality check that that wasn't going to happen. Coach Duggins will always have a special place in my heart for what he's done for me since my sophomore year up until now. He had me sit back and really think about what I wanted to do in my four years of being here. Him being hard on me has made me who I am today as a person. You know, most kids don't really see their 18th birthday, and so I'm just glad to be here. I can't ask for a better life how my life's going right now. So I believe God has played a tremendous part in that. When I first came here, I wasn't really close with God. By coming to school, having mass, and having classes with religion just made me come closer to God and understand more about my faith. Having opportunities for adoration has made me think of like bigger questions in life and thinking, was I made for something different? I kind of struggled with my faith, but now I'm slowly getting into it. Our peers have kind of educated us, and we never did that before. And it really inspires me. You know, I got my sophomores and juniors and freshmen. I really take them under my wing and show them the right way. Their grades is good so they can play on time and not be able to sit out a week. I make sure they're not cutting up in the hallway, make sure they're on time to class, because, you know, that's what was shown to me. I always wanted to go to this big school, like an Ivy League or something like that, because I have the academics to do that. But God always has a plan for us, and, and I think Bishop Ward has been a great help with me exercising that plan. After this past summer, the desire in my heart really changed, and that's when I was content with the call of going to seminary. When I think of myself in the position of a priest, I think one of my biggest desires is to help the youth. I'm extremely thankful for the donors. They're the people that allow me to receive my Catholic education and allowed me to say my yes, because without like, their donations and um, their prayers, I don't think I would be where I am today. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to have you hear from a current student at Bishop Ward. Now, we all sang along American Pie with her a little bit earlier this evening. I'd like you to please welcome to the stage Bishop Ward Sr., Meg Mahoney, to share her story. Good evening. Welcome to Bishop Ward High School and to the annual Spirit Dinner. It's great to see all of the support in this room, seeing so many familiar faces, and the state champs of 1971. 
My name is Meg Mahoney, and I'm a senior. Throughout my time at Ward, I have grown in my academic, social, and faith life. Since my freshman year, I have found mentors throughout the school to help me along the way. Whether it's been my teachers, coaches, or friends, they've all played a part in my journey with Christ. My first two years of high school, I was attending Mass regularly with my family and praying at school. But it wasn't deep. I was only doing it because it was what I've known my whole life. Thanks to my parents, Bill and Suzanne, I've attended a Catholic school since kindergarten. And while they teach you to pray, it's not till you're old, older that you fully try to understand how to pray or why you're praying. That constant faith growth has come from times when we have had an all-school adoration. When I'm in adoration, I can feel God's presence in a way that I don't normally feel. I can feel his love and when he helps me to release all of my troubles. The moment that we are allowed to go up and touch the cloth of Jesus is when I feel him most. When the cloth touches my hands, I can feel his power and love surrounding me, and it reminds me that he's always there. Many of my teachers or sports have helped me grow in my faith. My teachers help me to know that I'm not alone in anything in my life. They want to be there to cheer me on or to help me when I'm down. God is living through them to help me out in my life, and through them I can feel his presence. On my sports teams, I can feel him working through my teammates. They help me when I'm struggling during a game, in the classroom, or in my personal life. They're the ones that help me to be a better person and to still believe in myself and God. This year, a couple of my friends started a morning club called Jesus in Java. Students can come at 7.30 in the morning on Friday to the chapel and listen to talks from students or teachers about their faith and then have time to reflect on their words. After the prayer time, kids are welcome to have coffee and donuts. I've begun to come early to school to have more time with God and also to support my friends in starting their club. I enjoy attending Jesus in Java because it reminds me of adoration in a way and helps me to start my day off on a good note. My sophomore year, we got a new drama club director. Throughout my time in theater, I've had my ups and downs. In every moment in my life, Mrs. Evil Sizer has been there to help me through it emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Last year, I was having a hard time with school being online. She always ended up being there when I was at the tip of a breakdown. Every time I saw her, she would help to calm me down and give me the words that I needed to hear in those moments. In all of my moments with her, whether they were up or down, she has shown me how to follow in my faith and be a good leader. This year, she helped me to believe in myself more and have faith that everything would work out. Our drama club had more downs than ups this year, but with her attitude and leadership, we were able to pull together and have a show. It wasn't just any show, though. She chose a show based around spirituality. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is about the faith and belief in Christ. She could have chosen any place she wanted to, but she chose one that teaches children about their journey with Christ and how strong faith can be if you just believe. Doing this show helped me to realize that her spirituality has helped me to see how good of a role model she is for myself and for everyone in the drama club. Recently, Mr. Hines said to me, let go, let God. Hearing those words helped me realize that I don't have to hold all of the weight on my shoulders and that God is there to help me. In adoration, those words are exactly how I feel the minute that I touch the cloth of Jesus that's flowing from the altar. There have been times since COVID-19 has started that have caused more stress in my life, but if I remember those words, I know that they will help me more in the future. Ward gives us the opportunity to have these kinds of experiences. They help us to gain more relationships with our teachers and have more opportunities to attend mass, go to the chapel, go to adoration, or go to confession. Only Catholic schools give us that opportunity, and I realize that I've been able to grow spiritually and intellectually as a young woman with them. Sometimes life happens, and I just need someone to talk to. Fortunately for me, I have people here I can go to. There's times when I can just talk to my peers, but other times I want to talk to someone about topics that I can't talk to my peers about. It might not be a huge problem or conflict, but I just need someone there to listen to me. Most of the time, I go to talk to a teacher and tell them what's on my mind. Oftentimes, they don't have to respond or only end up saying about two words and I feel better. Other times, if I ask them for help, they help me work through the problem. These relationships with the faculty and staff are so strong 
that I think I will always be able to talk to them even after I graduate. Another important part of who I am is that I have been an Irish dancer for the past 12 years. My dance teacher has been a huge influence on my life and my character. Not only is she, she my dance teacher, but she's also my confirmation sponsor. Throughout my time growing up and dancing, Miss Bridget has been an influence in my faith. Every year on Ash Wednesday, I would go to dance and she would have her ashes on her forehead, just like my sister and I. It was always amazing to me that even though she had a busy day, she would still find the time to get her ashes. That was part of the reason that I chose her to be my sponsor for confirmation. She has helped me to grow as a woman and taught me to get out of my shell. She's the reason that I can be here today talking in front of all of you. Nothing has been more challenging with everyone since March of 2020. We all had to stay home, figure out how to do things on a screen, and it's taken two years to get back to a semi-normal feeling. It has taken everyone, my friends, my family, and the school to get back to what was once normal. We had normal extracurricular activities this year that included having fans, when last year we weren't allowed to attend events. Having everyone be able to come together this year and celebrate Mass and Adoration as a school has been great. We couldn't have any visitors last year, so having alumni be able to come back into the building and see what has changed has been fun to witness again. This year, we were able to have our auction and this event in person. We are glad to be celebrating with everyone and missing those who couldn't be here tonight. The continued success of our school depends on the support of all of you here tonight and in our community. I'm thankful for my parents, school, family, and the support of the Bishop Ward community. Once a cyclone, always a cyclone. Thank you so much, Meg. You know, folks, history, legacy, tradition, those are words that we very often associate with Bishop Ward. And certainly, those are words that we can associate with Meg's family. Meg follows in a long line of Mahoney alumni here at Bishop Ward. With her graduation in May, the Mahoney family will have walked the halls of Bishop Ward for 102 years. Let's hear it for the Mahoney family. We truly do have legacy, history, and tradition on our side here at Bishop Ward. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Bishop Ward President, Mr. Jay Dunlap. Thanks again to all of you for being part of this evening, for being part of this beautiful family, uh, the Cyclone Ward family. Congratulations again to the state championship team, to Dick and to Sandy. It's been such a delight to get to know you and to see what you have done to support this institution and to support these kids. Uh, I wanted to point out Sister Rosie Kolich, uh, who is one of the Sisters of Charity of Leavenworth. And for the generations here, it was the sisters that made this an affordable place for the working class families of Kansas City, Kansas, and Wyandotte County, right? They were the human endowment that made this affordable. And that's why, I don't know if they're still doing it, but for years in parishes, there's been that collection for the sisters for their retirement because they worked for nothing and so they didn't even have social security. Anyway, our gratitude to Sister Rosie and to the sisters for building up this place, right? <laughs> now, that human endowment isn't here. There is a financial endowment that generous souls have helped us build. It's at $13.5 million. The ultimate goal is to get to $25 million. That's not what we're doing tonight, but we are doing something in concert with that. We're raising scholarship funds. Well, what are those scholarship funds doing? You've heard a lot of it already from the kids talking about what it's meant for them. But let me throw some additional data at you. This last fall, we had our uh, accreditation visit. It's something that happens every four or five years. A outside experts come in and evaluate the school, and I'm glad to tell you that Bishop Ward got a glowing uh, review from the accreditation team. And yes, thank you. 
And the first thing they observed is that the students here are known and loved and cared for. And I think you heard that again in the video. Let me tell you about some of the students you're supporting. I mean, you, you saw the Meg Mahoney's and you saw Abby Hill, who, the volleyball player in the video. I mean, they're fourth generation Bishop Ward families and those folks are still here. And that great legacy is part of what we're sustaining through an event like this tonight. But there are also those families that are quite new. For instance, and I'm going to try to tell you about certain students here in a way that doesn't identify too much information, but that gives you a picture. So a, a student is here from a refugee family from a country in Africa. The student's parents are no longer alive. The student lives with an aging aunt and uncle. The language in the home is an African dialect. The student had been in a KCK public school and was threatened by gangs. That student has come to Bishop Ward and not only survived but thrived. That's the beauty of Bishop Ward and that's what the scholarship money we're raising tonight supports. Imagine coming from a home where Spanish is the first language, so you're learning here in English, that's an added challenge. But imagine coming from a family where you will be the first to graduate from an American high school, the first to go on to college, and you've got a full ride scholarship to college. But your parents don't understand that. The parents don't understand why the student would be moving out of the home before that student is independent in life working, married, what have you. So imagine that education process. That's part of what we go on, what we do here. I talk to our friends at the Splinter Schools, you know, Miege, Aquinas, St. James. They don't have to deal with that issue at all. That's an issue here at Bishop Ward. So those are some of the students, those are some of the families we're supporting tonight. I met just recently with a mom. She was one of 10 kids from the capital city of a, of a Latin American country. In her native country, she's an attorney. But because the one brother among her 10 siblings was killed in, in drug-related gang violence at age 21, she brought her sons here to Bishop Ward and she works cleaning homes instead of being an attorney like she was in her native city. Meg mentioned Jesus in Java, this wonderful student-led prayer event that we have Friday mornings. One of the students shared his story, uh, told us that he moved in with his grandparents when he was 10 years old because he had an alcoholic father and a, an absentee mother. Didn't know anything about his Catholic faith until he moved in with grandma and grandpa. And it's not unusual for a number of our kids actually to be raised by their grandparents. Uh, he started learning about his faith. He became an altar server at his parish. He's been active in sports, theater, just about everything we have going, this young man's involved in. Uh, been very prominent in that student-led Jesus and Java prayer group. Has a sibling here, too. These are the people who your scholarship donations are supporting. So I just wanted to broaden your view and maybe personalize a little bit what it means to make these contributions tonight and throughout the year in support of our scholarship efforts for these kids. And with all this happening, with the positive review from the accreditation team, it's really been a beautiful year around here. Our football team had their best season in 12 years. Our boys basketball team won their conference for the first time in 30 years. Just a week ago, we were announcing to 16 of our seniors, almost a quarter of the senior class, that they were winners of the Hispanic Development Fund scholarships. Uh, gosh, that's just a, a handful of the accomplishments that we're pointing to and that we're so proud of this year and that we're continuing to ask you to support because that's what Bishop Ward is. That's who we are. That's this family. And so on that note, we have on the tables these little thank you slips and a pen. I know many of you have already been very generous in supporting this event and glad to say that we are well on our way to making our goals and, and the funds that we need to support our kids. But if you're able to help us again tonight, please take the slip, 
take the pen, fill out the information, and in a couple of minutes, some of our students will come around and collect these from the tables. Thank you. God bless you. Go Cyclones. Absolutely do it. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate your generosity. We do have students who are moving among the tables. If you choose to donate tonight, they are able to take your donation. There are envelopes provided. In just a moment, we'll have a few final thank yous. We'll have a group sing along, and then we'll thank you again for joining us here. Ladies and gentlemen, if we could ask you just to take your seats again for one moment. We would like to acknowledge and thank a few people before we wrap up. If we wouldn't mind just taking our seats again just for a moment. We'd like to make a couple of thank yous. We'll try.
Okay, if we could, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to just make a couple of thank yous before we wrap up our evening. We'll try, if we could, just to wrap with a couple of thank yous. Okay, so here's what I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask all the students who are over there, once they get done with that photo, all you students come this direction when you're done, because you're going to lead us in just a moment. Okay, students, head this way. Good, good. All right. Okay, folks, in just a minute, we're going to do something really special. At the end of every football game and at the end of every basketball game, the pep club expects me to play the school song so that they can sing along. In just a minute, they're going to lead us, and we're all going to sing. Sing out really loud. Okay. Uh, now I'm gonna go back up for just a second. I'm gonna do about two things before we. You know what? Let's just. No, it's not the end of the night yet. So we always do it at the end of the night. So I've got a couple people I want to thank before we get to that. Okay. Beautiful. All right, we've got our students are up here, and uh, we're gonna get the boys on stage too. Boys, come on over here as well. There we go. All right, folks, right before, right before we wrap up this evening and let you get back to catching up with one another. Right before. All right, folks, well... Okay, we'll ask one more time. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's subtle, but it's effective. That's the end of the fourth quarter. Now we need to do post-game. So, right before we leave, we would like to thank a few very special people who have contributed to and been honored this evening, and then the students are going to lead us in singing the school song. But first of all, we'd like to thank, especially thank the Spirit Committee, the committee who got together who helped make this event truly one of a kind. So thank you to the Spirit Committee, to everyone. She has gotten away from me, but she is here somewhere. In particular, I'd like to thank Lindsay Clemensic Hernandez, who is a Bishop Ward alum, who works in our development office, and who organized this superb event. And we want to thank her very much for her work on our behalf. Straight back. Oh, there she is. She heard me say, I'm going to call you on stage, and she ran to the other end of the room. That's Lindsay. Lindsay, wave. There you go. Thank you so much. We want to thank and congratulate again our 2022 Hall of Fame inductees, Mr. Dick Panther and the 71 state football champion team. We'd like to thank and congratulate Monsignor Mike Mullen. We certainly want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. We do want to thank again Miss Julianne Evelsizer and the Bishop Ward performers who are right now on the stage behind me. And what they're going to ask you to do is pick up your programs. And on the back cover of your programs, 
you will find the words to the Bishop Ward School song. And as I said, it is not a football game or a basketball game unless I play the school song so they can sing along. So, all right. I'm going to point it this way. You all. All right. We got here we go. Loud. Take it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sing along. Okay, you guys ready? Ready? Uh, uh, uh. For years and spirit we will be in your halls, O oh Lord. How about those students? Wonderful job. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight. Thank you for your support of Bishop Ward. Please have a wonderful year, and we look forward to seeing you next time.